My buddy Mark and I head to northern Arizona to ride some trails and do some camping before the start of Overland Expo West 2024. I came down with a cold shortly after getting back, so I'll keep this short and brief since I sound really bad right now. This video is a collection of things that I've been researching over the last year and some other things that I just thought were pretty interesting and wanted to share with you. So one of the first things that I found really cool was the Enios Grenadier Quartermaster. This is the pickup truck version of their uh, Enios Grenadier SUV. So longer wheelbase, uh, larger carrying capacity. It's a pickup truck. I mean, there's not much more you can say about it. Everybody else was uh, talking about the Toyotas, but I found this to be like one of the coolest things at the show. Enios did have a test drive set up. Uh, we didn't get a chance to do it. We just never made our way over there. But this thing is pretty cool, and I actually don't think that they were test driving the uh, Quartermaster pickup trucks over at their demo. But that's enough for me. I'm going to let the vendors and the exhibitors explain uh, their products to you guys from here on out. Hey there. How you guys doing? Not bad. How are you? Good. So, Air Haven? Uh, Day Lodge. The... Day Lodge. Air Haven is our uh, awning. Okay. So tell me about your awning, because this looks like it's run by, or it's stabilized by air. Yep. Yeah, so are you familiar with the kite surfing world at all? Yeah. So same same technology, the um, way the kites are built, and so it's got a TPU interior bladder, and then this is a 180 gram Dacron, so really bomber stuff, and um, it's inflatable, packs down to this bag right here. Oh wow. And then that that annex wall system that plus the awning fit in here perfectly and so it's a really compact lightweight system the total weight is under 10 pounds for both of them um, and so it's a great system if you don't want to bolt anything that and live yeah. on your vehicle all the time. And so when you're inflating the awning, these support struts will be closed off. Right. So you'll inflate the perimeter, attach it. That back strut attaches um, via either straps or our flex mounts. And then once you you got it attached, you unhook the hinges. These fill with air from here, and it self writes. So it's a super right, cool system. Thank you. Yeah. That's cool. And then you can route lights or oh, go for it. do whatever. Thank you. Hey, so, what are we doing? I gotta ask about this. Yeah, yo, please. You use these, like say somebody's got a roof rack, you'd use those yep. to secure it to the roof rack. Yeah, so you can use, so we, we have here, those over here. Come check it out. Use, and uh, I'll show you that here. So there's a couple different ways, which is nice, depending on how you're gonna attach it. But these straps here, they're nice because you wrap it around this slide, so you wrap it around and clip it to your rack. Oh, okay. And then these G-hooks, you push down, that opens, <laughs> so you slide it in, and then you just close it down. And so it's that's how we have the trucks. And then the van is attached with our flex mounts. Okay. So the flex mounts are our BHB accessories. And you can stick them on, and they're permanent or semi-permanent depending on your application. Um, but we have anywhere from kayak fishermen, uh, they love these. If they're offshore fishing, they can leash their rods to here. Right. Um, or their bait basket or whatever. That's pretty slick. And so yeah, these work really good. And then so if you don't have a rack, um, and what's also really nice too, is you can mount that awning straight to your slider door. Right. So you can slide the door oh. in and out and the awning just lives on the door. That's cool. Yeah, and so we make, we make the metal G hooks that clip onto doors or like gutters right um and so there's whatever you know it doesn't matter what you have it will mount to it so how do you inflate these is this like a a, a standard paddleboard pump okay it's about 25 pumps and then um the technology they do make some electronic pumps right now but when you're dealing with a 8 to 10 psi you just want to be careful right um and so we're working on getting an electric pump system but you know, just your standard paddleboard pump. Cool. So there's no like uh, energy draw from a battery to maintain it. No, That's no, pretty it's, neat. it it inflates. You know, we don't recommend inflating it and then leaving it out for a week or two. Right. Um, but um, like Russ, he's been kite surfing for 20 plus years, and he still uses the same kites. And think of how many times those have inflated, inflated, deflated, 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 deflated. Yeah. and that's the same same deal. Okay. 
Cool. That's awesome. What was your name again? Jesse. Nice to meet you, Jesse. Yeah, nice this to meet you. Awesome. What's your name? I'm Jay. Jay. This is Mark. 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 Thanks for stopping yeah, by, guys. You have a card, like a, yeah. some literature or something? Hey everybody, I'm with John and he's with Koru Overland. He's going to tell us about the trailers that these guys offer. Hey guys, so we got uh, two trailer models. We've got our Warthog 37, which is this bad boy right here. And then we also have our Badger 35. So if you want comfort, go with this one. If you want a little bit more of a, of a rugged experience, go with this one. Uh, we've got 35 inch tires on uh, this suspension, 37. So if you're wondering what the Warthog 37 Badger 35 is, that's where it's coming from, it's tire size. So uh, this guy's 2,200 pounds, uh, full red arc system, Dometic suite, diesel heater, hot water heater. We've got a 30 pound propane tank. Uh, we've got the ability to store all your gear. Uh, we've got a really robust roof rack that we had custom made. Uh, we do tents. Uh, we've got a 270 awning, and then uh, if you look up top on this one, we've got a 330 watt solar blanket. And uh, if I were to go and look at the uh, Red Arc system, you'll see that it's charging there. On, uh, on the Warthog, we've got a little bit of a different system. It's a Victron 24 volt. Uh, this is our solar panel blanket, so you can walk on these. Uh, they're really durable. Uh, this is a 595 watt panel, folds up like a blanket, and then uh, it allows you to store it in like a really small space. Wow. So on the top, we've got structured solar. In the back over here, we've got a full dometic kitchen. So same as what we have in the Badger. It's a dual burner stove, hot cold water sink, and then uh, the best feature is we've got a triple stage water filter system. Oh, wow. So you've got a sedimentary filter, a carbon filter, and then a ceramic filter with a coconut husk fiber. So no matter what water you put in, you're getting really good water out. That's fantastic. And then uh, we've got a 110 liter Dometic fridge, it's a stand up. So we've got a little bit of a freezer up here. Perfect for your, your needs. Uh, we've got a bunch of storage boxes everywhere. Um, over here is uh, where the magic happens. This is our utility cabinet. So we've got a full Victron display. I'm working on updating the firmware right now. Uh, 30 pound propane tank, Propex uh, hot air heater. Uh, we've got our plumbing here for our propane system. Uh, in this cabinet is gonna be our Victron electronics. So it's a little hard to see in there, but uh, it's a- That's awesome. 24 volt, we got 10 kilowatts of battery. Uh, which will run everything for a long time. On the inside in here, we've got uh, a 12 volt mini split air conditioner. So this will run um, for about 18 hours on the coldest setting oh. with 10 kilowatts of battery. And it's an under mount, so it's not a roof mount unit, which means that you're not gonna have any leaking or condensation. Gotcha. Uh, tons of storage. We designed all the storage boxes to fit really well with everything. And uh, it's about the equivalent of a king size bed. Okay. Uh, so it can fit someone up to six foot seven lengthwise. Holy smokes. And uh, we've got some 12 volt fans. And then uh, if you take a look up there, we've got um, our heater ports. Uh, we've also got a phone charger and kind of like a hotel style. This looks like a hotel. Lamp. So it's, it's really nice. Up top, we've got a full length roof rack. It's the uh, biggest roof rack that our our factory partner had ever made. Okay. And uh, we've got uh, rooftop solar as well as the ground deploy. And then in the front, we've got a storage box, a spare tire, full size, and then we've got a light on the front, and then we're running the uh, McKitch, which is the Australian import. Uh, 360 30. degree, yeah, oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Yep. And this whole thing weighs 39, 50 pounds. Okay. So it's a relatively lightweight aluminum composite shell. All right. Um, so you can tow this with uh, a Raptor F-150. Nice. Uh, if you're brave, you can do a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So what's the price range? Uh, as or Actually, I won't even say price range. As this one yeah. is built right here, yeah. what would this one go for? 85. And this one? 47.5. For, nice. Yeah, okay. So we, we don't do the options game. We don't, we don't play around You just around build it a certain way, and that's yeah. the way it goes. Yeah, our options are very limited. So like what you see is what you get. Okay. You're not going to say, oh, you want lithium batteries? That's extra. Oh, you want a diesel heater? That's extra. No, it's like it comes with everything you need, nothing you don't. Awesome. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, man. Well, John, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, it. Appreciate it, Jay. Thanks, man. Thanks. Do you guys offer a composite, a replacement for the interior? It's a good question. Okay. Um, so we do not. You do not. Yeah. 
So what we tell everybody is we don't make custom trailers, we make a customizable trailer. Okay. So this trailer right here and this trailer, foundational wise, exactly the exact trailer same in every trailer. single way. Yep. So frame is welded the exact same, every part of it's the same. So we have a custom aluminum T-track right here, as well as holes down the frame here. So every accessory you see on here is bolted on, completely modular, customizable. So I can loosen up these bolts on this crossbar, slide it forward, slide it back, do whatever I want to do. It also makes it so that you could buy that trailer, save on the price right, right off the bat, right? Go camping, own the trailer for a year, whatever, two years, and then upgrade the accessories Add as pieces you go. To it. Yep. So, okay, that trailer as it sits right now yep. would cost a consumer how much? 12900 That is freaking awesome. Yeah. So, and if you gave me, let's say a couple hours, two hours, right? I can take every single accessory off of this and put it, put on, it on that, that. one, to make it look completely identical. You would so, not be able to tell the difference. So the 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 customizable piece is the T tracks that you guys put on the trailer. Yep. So that's on both of them. cool. Yep. And then if you look right here, there's holes right there in the C channel. Right. So I can take this step off, move it over to there, bolt it on, there. and now that trailer has a stand. That's pretty slick. So same thing with our rail system. So we call this our side accessory system. We've got a modular plate right here. You can move those up and down. So before this expo, I had a uh, my propane tank that's up on the front, I've had it right here. Right. And then before the expo, we decided to just kind of move it, so we moved it up to the front, put the rotopacks here. So, move that's anything around. pretty cool. And then this dimension is the same as this dimension, which is the same as the side of that dimension, which is the front here is two of those. Okay. So, same principle. You can take that rotopax, you can put it up here, take this propane, put it on the other side, put it over here, over your fender, literally whatever you want. That is pretty neat. So on the inside, I'm noticing the control panel here. Yeah, so everything is pre-wired for everything. So this trailer does not have electric brakes, um, it doesn't have rock lights, but it's pre-wired for both of them. Okay. So if you wanted to get that trailer, right, and add rock lights later, you just Throw the rock lights up there, throw some bolts on, run the wiring, a couple zip ties, plug it in, you're good to go. Okay. It all works. Cool. Um, the base trailer does not come with an electrical box in okay. the back. So it means there's no battery in that trailer. Uh, the reason for that is we want the base model to be as open and accessible to as many people as we could. So you don't need it. Right. You can be plugged into your tow vehicle and it'll run off of your tow vehicle's battery, all your lights, all your fan, everything like that. But as soon as you turn your tow vehicle off, there's no battery to pull that from, right? But it's, it's still pretty easy to Plug set up your own battery, battery uh, yeah. power system in there. Yeah, so this box right back here. <laughs> so that's the electrical box. And it does, it adds um, a DC to DC charger, fuses, inverter, all the very expensive electrical equipment, right. right? As well as we'll give you a battery. Okay. So, and with that, the whole trailer runs off the battery now. That's and it's awesome. just plug and play. There's three cables that come down. All if you wanted to do it by yourself, like on that trailer, right? You just take those four little bolts off, right? There's three wires under there. You just clip them in, put that plate back on. You're good to go. That's awesome. My name is Jake. Levi. Nice to meet you, Levi. Nice to meet you. This is awesome. Yeah, like I said, Haley, could you t please tell me about your product? Yeah, absolutely. So we started this product out because the owner of the company, Mike, his dad um, was in the military and was looking for a different option uh, outside of like baby wipes, dude wipes, because it's just, we're not babies. Why are we using baby products? So basically what came out of that was the shower package. What it is, is it's going to be a two foot by one foot towel. The reason it's designed specifically at this parameter is because we really do want it to be a full body clean. We like to say top down, not the other way around. Uh, nice thing about it is, outside of its size, is the fact that it is packaged in food grade oil. So what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to stick it in your jet oil and on a nice, you know, a cold day, you're gonna have a nice warm shower. So it's gonna give you just a much more comfortable shower out in the field. We have a lot of hikers, a lot of hunters, uh, and typically they have some sort of heat source to be able to boil it. We don't use any soaps or surfactants, so no residues left on the skin, all natural. Um, we have three spawn spa spare scents as well as unscented. And awesome, thank you very much.
Okay. So the trail guides are a group of people. We have about five hundred or so active ones um, all over the United States, Canada, Baja, um, and they submit trails. All these color coded trails, green easy, um, blue medium, and so on. Um, so if I click here on a green trail, this will pull up, and this is a physical person who went and ran this trail. And they are, they wrote a description. They've included some photos. Yeah. And we keep adding about 200. And then they also will say, you know, this trail was a 3 out of 10. This is the elevation it was. Um, this is how long it took. This is point to point how long it was. The trail guide also gives it the rating for difficulty. And they do. Do you provide. Uh, a criteria for them to follow to do that? Yeah, so if you tap onto one of these trails, you can see the difficulty rating and how they base it on them. It's not about the vehicle or anything or the skill of the driver. It's about, you know, how deep was that water crossing? How big was that ledge that you went to? Um, so if you're ever curious, you can go through and read all of these. Um, but then there's also an additional explanation that the trail guides give you um, specifics to that trail. Okay. Based yeah. off of their, their experience of driving it. Yep. That's pretty cool. You know, at, at, at what point, you know, maybe they wrote it in the spring and it was really muddy, but it's easier in the summer when it's happening. Dry, yeah. Which is why we have trail reports. Are you familiar with trail reports? Yeah. yeah. Super, super awesome um, feature that we have that just keeps people updated about the condition of the trip. Okay. So, so, to do this, you have to sign up for this, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a little application. I want to make sure that the people that I put the program are experienced, can be safe, and provide uh, good content to people who are using it. Okay. Um, so, I can get you set up with, if you're interested in becoming one. I am interested. But I, I have a question yeah, about like um, <laughs> requirements as far as you know how frequent does that that person need to be out like running a trail or something? Yeah. Like, is there a requirement for that or? Yeah, good, good question. So I guess some benefits of being a trail guide, you get a free yearly elite membership, okay. and then swag. We, we give you credit to this um, the gear store, mm -hmm. and then you also get just pro deals on top of our already um, partners that we have. Okay. Um, so those are all. The perks of being a trail guide, um, and to receive that, you have to submit at least one trail a year. One trail per year. One trail per year. Okay. Yep. And then, and then I renew your your elite membership, and then you submit another trail. Okay. And then I can renew it again. That's too easy not to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm in. Okay. I'll get you Hey there. Is this your truck? Yeah, it's my truck. Where's the flatbed from? Uh, from uh, Beyond 4x4. That's my flatbed. Did you make the flatbed? Uh, yeah, I designed the flatbed and then I get them made overseas. Would you mind telling me about your flatbed? Uh, sure, yeah. So, um, like, uh, what would you like to know? Just the inspiration to build it, like what characteristics it has. Like, compare it to some of the other stuff that's on the market. Why okay. yours is better? Yeah. So, um, kind of the inspiration behind the flatbed is uh, I actually have a family of four with one on the way. Um, I wanted to go away from the rooftop tent. And so, with this setup, we're actually ground tenting. Um, and when we go camping, we throw all our gear inside. There's a, a ton of space. But then when uh, I want to go wheeling with the boys, um, I actually take the canopy off and I run the flatbed so that we're not running as much weight. Um, on the back uh, and so really the the utility factor of being like a three-in-one you have the flatbed option you have like a truck mode and what I like to call is the Aussie mode and that's when um, the canopy is on and uh, like this is very really like mainstream in Australia um, and I really want to make it mainstream here in the US uh, our price point is going to be uh, considerably lower than uh, anyone uh, in the market. For this entire setup, including the flatbed, we're doing it for $12,000, uh, and that includes installation in Sacramento, California. My philosophy is like, I want to make overlanding affordable again. Yeah. 
And it's like, I build products that I personally want and I'm looking at the market and I'm like, oh, I wish I could get that, but I can't afford that. Right. I'm a regular guy, I have a family, you know. One of our other main products is this camper right here. Um, and so the camper is all inclusive. You get the insulation in the tent, um, and the main differentiator is the fact that it's transformable. So it could transform from a camper shell into a fully integrated camper with a tent on top. Um, and this runs for 8,000 and we're doing a show special for 7,000. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty, that's really good. Thank you. Holy smokes, man. Last year, let's start from the outside. Now we have an awning. Yeah. Uh, our awning system is removable. Okay. So if it's like really nice weather outside, you're camping on the beach, um, you can remove the awning system. Um, so you have like a really nice 270 view. And also, if it's downpouring, really hot outside, you can also install the awning system. Okay. So, so again, it's a very modular system. Um, but I can't wait show you what we've done on the driver's side. So oh, let's see. Let's go this thing. So last year, we have a static, um, basically, mount for a max rest table. Right. Like, throughout our testing and seeing how, when we arrive late at campsite, we want to like have a table and a quick station to cook, and then we build something that's double function. But I can show you on this side right now. Yes. So it's the yeah, security system there. Yeah. So one, you have a quick access to your recovery gear. And you know if you have a camper and then try to level on an even ground when you're camping, um, you're, again, I can use this smash shop table, shove it in the tire, level the vehicle, and that's one function. Okay. The second one is... Arriving late at camp, I want to do a quick quick meal and something to cook on. I don't have to take out any tables. Um, this snack shack table can cook here. This can still open. And you can just pass your food inside, inside of camp. So we have the topper and also this guy right here. Actually, I'll show the topper a little bit. Okay. So this side right here is our... our, our or camper, so let's go and meet the passenger side. On the passenger side now, we did a quad system. So we built a mountain bracket for quad yeah. to accommodate our mountain bike on the side. Okay. So you can see, you still be able to prop the tent up. All you have to do is loosely um, loosely the, the quad, and so your bike can tilt on this side, and then so you can prop the tent. But cool thing with this, when you remove your bike, you still have access to your gallwing bay. So you have your dolly panel, you have your cabinet. You can actually do one cabinet, two cabinet, or four cabinets. So this could be your garage, could be your kitchen, um, your charging station for your drone, if you're a photographer. Easy to work with lenses, change lenses. So example, we you have your max track stable here. You can set up your camera station here and just like grab all this stuff. So just like with the table that you have, that you showed us a second ago, you can use this as, a, as your pantry. Yep. You know, and pull your spices or whatever else out of that and then cook your meals from the table that you have on the side if you have the table over here or on the other side yes like, yeah so again if it's like camper all of our accessories is no drill required so you can change the configuration of the camper throughout the year so if it's mountain bike season you can remove the max track stable you can carry two bikes on the side of the camper if it's winter you can mount also the aqua system here to carry your ski gear and then when you remove your gear open your bowing door, you have all your gear ready for you to go. Hit the trails or hit the snow. So 
that's really the goal of the camper is get modularity, right. changing throughout the progression. And then, of course, there's no perfect camper out there. Everyone set up their camper different. Right. Inside. You were here inside before. So yes. this is the new addition. Oh, it's a storage area. Ah, so it's more space, so no waste space. Um, our bed, you can store a three inch mattress, still leave your beddings in there, even your house pillows that you have, and still be able to close the camper. And when that thing is up, you have another storage space to store something like your toiletry, you have moldy pouches. Oh, wow. Again, this is just all Amazon, like pouches, um, blankets, um, it's just extra storage space. So this is the V2 camper. Super excited and man, I, I can't wait. This is fantastic. So still modular, still completely customizable. Somebody buys the base camper from you, then they could still order different accessories to install themselves like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Do you guys, so when a customer orders a, uh, orders a camper and they want a power solution, mm -hmm. you guys install the Red Arc system yes. or is Red Arc the only one that you use, or do you use others as well? So the thing with when we start building campers, so we want to make really understand how our customer wants to use a camper. So one is first we ask them how often do they go out? Right. Are they staying three days or four nights? Um, if they're just doing like weekend camper. Mm -hmm. For me, like Red Arc, it's nice to have. But you could also just stick to Anchor, Go Zero, right? Because yeah. those are just a weekend, right? Like lights, charging the phone, charging the laptop. But if you're like a really serious overlander, I'll recommend Red Arc because you're doing weeks and weeks, two weeks. Those are Red Arc. It's the best product for me. Okay. Smaller footprint, not much component involved. Mm -hmm. This is the Manager Thirty. Uh, being charged coming from the alternator, mm -hmm. and then you have your distribution box. Really easy to see if something wrong with your system. So, let's say something happened with your uh, tent app, it will just lit up right here with an LED screen. Mm -hmm. Take out the bolt, figure out what's wrong with the system, and then you have also the display here. So, your display right here right now from 54, powering the fridge and earlier powering the Keurig. So, you, you'll see here if it's charging for the vehicle charging the solar or the sure power right so it's really cool system easy to work with also such your bluetooth phone that's why i really love red art um i wish if red art's listening please release a low profile battery that i could like use especially working on a five foot battery right right now. so um yeah that's cool. the v2 camper awesome um if you, you said you had a uh uh Canopy. Ooh, let's, let's, uh, let's go check it out. <laughs> so I know this is new because I didn't see this last year and I'm seeing it now and it looks really good. Yeah, I, I so like this. This is our new addition to our fleet. This is the topper. Um, again, always modularity. Right. Um, it's your match track stable here. You can also mount your, your bike on the side, all the accessories that you see on our camper. You can also mount this guy right here and T tracks all around. You can add crossbar on top of the roof if you wanted to. And on the top, the, also the topper has T tracks again. So there's T tracks everywhere. You can run freaking eight crossbar here to load more load on top, and right. you can run crossbar on top to carry your favorite rooftop tent. Then again, this is it's like a six dollar part from Amazon. This is this is awesome. This works the exact same way as the camper, only it doesn't have a tent. Yeah. This is fantastic. And if you want to have your favorite tent on top, just run a couple crossbar. And put and your tent up there. Yeah. That's awesome. You want to look at the small little Maverick that we have? Let's take a look. I was looking at that earlier. I'm actually pretty impressed by this. So, four foot bag. Okay. As you can see, but if you want to look at the inside, it's... Ooh, spare spacious. You can still um, set this up the same way that you would with the with the regular size camper as well, correct? Right? Yes. Okay. So let's go hop in here. Four foot bed. But look at the inside. You still have lots of space in here. Lots of space. Move things around. 
that's like almost three feet in depth to move things around so you can still look at the space from the inside move things around just stack in here on top of the cab and plenty of room you just have eight foot in length for the maverick and also 15 in, 51 inches in width so it's eight foot back awesome yeah. that's fantastic yeah. this is you guys are doing really good stuff we tried especially with this market um, actually i'm the designer of all the campers that you see here today um, if you have any questions or any suggestion, go to our Instagram. Follow our Instagram, packout underscore USA. Um, we always look at comments and see what other people want us to do mm -hmm. because this is just we'll just design it from mounting the record to our frame. Awesome, yeah. fantastic! I think you guys do some awesome stuff. Man. We try, man. We try. And that's it, folks. That was Overland Expo West 2024. I want to thank everyone who stuck around to the end. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my video. Don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button and ring the bell for future videos. And if you liked it, go ahead and leave us a thumbs up. If you have some feedback, go ahead and leave that in the comments for me as well. If you got any questions, you can leave those in the comments as well, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. In the meantime, I'm going to go and take care of myself and uh, compile some of the video from the camping trip that we were on prior to going to Expo. So, until next time, we will see you guys later.